What's up guys? Um, today we're going to be going through and showing you guys how to set up leopard geckos. I know a lot of you guys are new to the hobby or maybe don't even keep the species, so I wanted to educate you guys and just give you something to watch if you guys wanted to. Um, this is just a preview for Instagram, but if you want, follow over to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll be able to see everything. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> So first off, we're going to have um, hatchling size tubs, six quart to like the V, I think sevens or eights. I don't even know, but generally like a six quart tub is fine for hatchlings. This is a 28 quart tub uh, for like adults, um, kind of to represent like a 10 or 10, 20 gallon. This is honestly like a 20 gallon size. So um, you always want your humid hides. This is just what we use here. We cut these out for the bigger ones. Um, just use paper towel. Paper towel is super sanitary. You can change it like every time you clean, two to three times a week. Um, you just spray this down with your water pretty much and then it creates a little sauna in there. This, of course, all your moist hides are gonna be going on the hot, hot, hot side pretty much. Uh, right over your heat tape, your heat mats, everything. Um, for hatchlings, um, these are universal on all of our tubs, so you have like regular hides for hatchlings. I don't really have an enclosed environment like this for the adults because um, they get changed a lot. They poop a lot. So um, super simple. I like to set them up like that where they have the hide. That's going to be the front of the tub. This is the back. I'll put in these. I have different ones too. You could spice it up. You could even put like a couple different like sizes here and there too. They all fit around. Um, just to give you like a couple different options. There's so many ways to do this. This isn't like a black and white video. Um, for substrate, if you're going with like a 10 gallon, a 20 gallon, you can use tile, non-adhesive shelf liner, um, paper towel, newspaper, etc. cetera. Um, that's always viable. I love these bowls too. You can use them as water bowls for your females when they're laying or non-escape feeder dishes. Worms cannot get out of here. Just to show you what that looks like. Bam. So they can't get out. It's really hard to kind of clean everything out with these two. So these are disposable, super cheap. I have really big supply, so you can toss those in away from your heat. Kind of slows down the metabolism. Um, next, what's really important, you kind of want to know what you're going to be supplementing as far as vitamins um, that are necessary for their diet. So um, one touch base on vitamin D3, what does that allow us to do with the geckos? So we know calcium is important, right, for their bone structure and health, but in order for them to process calcium, um, animals that are really nocturnal, crescepular, like leopard geckos, are gonna require vitamin D3 to metabolize that calcium. Um, there is a myth going around that they can overdose on vitamin D3. Um, that is false. Um, if they were gonna be doing that, they definitely impact themselves before overdosing. So um, this is all in one. That's all you guys need to do. I mean, this has been around for forever. Osteoform and Vionate, that's a wonderful mix. Uh, buy that stuff by the tubs. This is just on hand for whatever reason. These are mainly full. I really don't touch these a lot. Um, this is mineral. Uh, it's just gonna be like your extra vitamins, your multivitamins and supplements. Um, where's their list? So pretty much this is like an analyst of that. So pretty good. That's gonna be like once a week, once to three times sometimes. Um, you just kind of want to have it like supplied. You can either dust it on their food. Um, leopard geckos actually maintain it usually by themselves. So they'll go to a bowl of calcium and intake as much calcium as they need. So all that's missing from this setup, let's go ahead and set it up like I would. A new hatchling. So right, we got the worms in the corner. I only put that in after they shed and have their first poop, which is within a few couple days um, with new hatchlings. And then that's when they start like recognizing the food bowl, ready, getting ready to go to eat. Um, what's really important, if your gecko's not eating, make sure your husband is correct. You want a hot spot of 90 to 92 degrees. Get it around 90 if you're just starting out. 92 is, gets a little warm. 
Um, that's for more advanced keeping. Uh, I can touch on that in a different video. But 90 degrees, you want to have a variance of, I don't know, 75. Um, but it should be 90 degrees and vary out to that. It's not going to be set temps. So um, humidity wise, how do that they shed properly? I'm in the hatchling tubs a lot. So I'll just toss in a hatchling. This one was not hatched here. This one was sent over by Chad Ramsey. Beautiful little girl. So see the size comparison. She's a couple weeks old. She's over 20, uh, I think 15 grams. So she is still a baby, but not really small as they come out of the eggs. Um, this is a really good sized tub for her. This is equivalent to, I would say a 10 gallon because it's gonna provide more of a secure like enclosure type environment. But like I said, there's multiple ways to keep them. There's definitely ways to keep them in glass. Uh, there's bioactive setups, there's tubs. Um, I work with these um, a whole lot because it's easier and it's stress-free on the animal. These animals are super simplistic. Um, they're not super intelligent. I have my intelligent species in more um, enriching environments, but these guys really don't care. As long as they got their food, they got their water, and they're set up for success, um, you really can't go wrong with these guys. So I would just mist it down. I'm not gonna mist it here because she just went through an awesome shed. Um, so yeah, normally you'd mist that down. The heat would kind of create a little sauna in here, and then that's your humid hide. That's how simple it is, guys. Um, you don't really need um, all the foliage that you would in the glass tank because these are gonna be pretty much their burrows, their little dens, their environment. It's gonna have to be safe. Most of these are enclosed on all sides too, so they feel really comfortable. Um, this one's taken off, as you can see. So um, as soon as eggs hatch, we'll show you more on setups. We'll film cleaning videos. We'll do more of that. Um, Next up, maybe let's talk genetics. Let's talk um, how to get started in breeding. Um, leave comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Uh, this is really fun. I like this little POV style. I got the camera up there as well too. So uh, different views for you guys. But um, let's get you guys out of here. We got the show next weekend. Stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching.